Something a bit different this time. I'm here today with something pretty different to the normal content. Uh, it's not a figure review or any behind the scenes photography, uh, but instead I'm going to be having a quick look at these LumaCube 2.0 Pro Lighting Light uh, light Kit. Um, I bought this recently for myself and a couple of people in the Dragon Ball Discord channel. If you're not a member already, um, there's a link below. Be sure to jump in. It's the best place to find out news information, just talk about figures in general. Um, anyway, a couple of guys there were asking what they're like and asking for my opinion. I thought probably the best way to do that is just to make a quick video showing that because I know when I was looking around I'd see these around on Instagram quite a bit and I'd often wonder to myself are they actually any good is it worth buying if I did buy them would I use them um, and I know since it's not the cheapest item uh, the current pricing for them I believe is um, on amazon.com it's $2.99 US so it's not cheap it's pretty damn expensive to be honest uh, the retail price is $300 30, 50, around mid 300 range. And yeah, it's not worth that price. I can see why they've discounted it. At $2.99, a little bit of a stretch, uh, but the kit does come with a lot of goodies and you do get two lights. So so first off, um, what do you get in the kit? Uh, you got the two lights, the 2.0 version, and uh, you got some barn doors um, and an array of filters and a couple of snoots. So, before I go over these accessories, let's have a quick look at the lights and how they work. So each light has a attachment on the front end. This is um, with magnets for the uh, different filters. So this pops off. And then you're just left with the light. Uh, the sizing is around about five centimeters, I believe. Uh, the depth is, uh, yeah, about four and a half centimeters. Uh, about four centimeters that way. Hopefully you can see that. So very nice, small, compact uh, lights, and they've also got a standard tripod mount. Um, you won't fit on any very big tripods, but the standard uh, point shoot camera size gorilla pods. Uh, this is actually from a gorilla pod here, and it just attaches like so. So that's good. So if you've got a couple of stands around, uh, you can pick up really cheap tripods uh, for a few dollars, uh, which will do a trick for these since they're light and small. Okay, now in terms of controls on them, pretty much only got the two buttons, uh, the minus power and plus power, uh, obviously increase and decrease brightness. And the decrease brightness button also is the power button. To turn it on, all you do is hold down this button for about three seconds. There we go, and that's on. When you turn it on, it's on the lowest brightness, and then you can just increase the brightness. Uh, for, a, ooh, the camera there we for a small light, they are actually pretty bright. So for a small light, it does a really good job of lighting up what you want to. And then all the attachments help to amplify the lighting and allow you to control it better. Let's just turn this off. So the only other thing you have is the flap here, which is covering the USB-C charging port. And yeah, that is it. The lights are simple. Um, got pretty good sturdy construction. Um, if you're gonna drop it on a general surface, you're not gonna break it anytime soon. So perfect for indoor photography, like what we do with figures and action figures and general toys or even product photography. Uh, due to the size, you can kind of fit them into quite unique places, which is awesome. So, about the first attachment they come with, it's this cap that goes on the front. It is pretty tight, but once it clips on, uh, you're good to go with the other attachments. It's got the two magnets on the side, and everything just clips on. So, let's go over the different attachments it comes with, and their purpose, and how you would use them. Okay, start off with, um, you've got two sets of barn doors. Now, if you're not sure what a barn door is, it's pretty much like what the name says. It's got two giant flaps that open up, and then two more that 
Now you can use these to control and direct the lighting. Uh, so let's put on one light and we can see what it's like. Okay, so if you check out the light that's going onto the um, table and the black background here, you can see it's very spread out, it's not really directed at all. But if you slowly close in the barn doors, you can kind of see here now, the shadow where the light, light is cut off is getting a lot more defined. And again, you can bring in the side bits more and the flaps. And now, all of the light has been concentrated into this one tiny square area. Now what this means is that you're able to control where the light is shining, what you're getting highlights on, and where the shadows are going to appear. When you open it up, that light gets softer and it's spread over a larger surface area. So the barn doors are a very easy way to direct the direction of your lighting and to create some unique shadows. Okay, next up we have the diffusing dome. Uh, so this is a frosted plastic dome and what this is going to do is it's going to redirect the light and soften it. Just diffuses the light is the term that they use and what that means is it becomes really soft. So instead of being for example midday sun directly in the sun uh, it's like you're standing in your living room behind your drapes with the light being softly reduced. So now if I increase the brightness you can see it kind of looks like a light bulb. So I'm going to shine it on the black background here. In the center it's a bit more concentrated but everywhere else the light is really soft. You don't get any harsh shadows. I'm going to pop this off. You can kind of see there's a very harsh lighting. Okay, so we've got Godzilla here. So with the diffused light, kind of lights him pretty evenly and you get some nice shadows on the side, but it's nothing too harsh. But when you take it off and you shine it on, the light is mostly concentrated directly in the beam and it's definitely a lot more harsher. Okay, so I've got all the other filters, gels, and diffusers that it comes with. So we've seen the diffusing dome already, and there's two of those, one for each light. And then on top of that, you also have two soft light diffusers, two strong diffusers. Now these work exactly the same way as the dome, but instead of being a dome, it's just a flat filter. And they will soften the light. And you've got two honeycomb effects. Um, a strong one and a light one. And now with the stars, it kind of spreads the light out. It's kind of imagine the sun is shining through a tree with all its branches. It kind of creates those subtle shadows, soft shadows throughout the light. Breaks it up. And then next up, we've got some gels. Um, red, blue, green, yellow. And then two warming gels. There's a level one and a level four. Uh, so we'll go over these now, show what they do, and how they change for the light. Okay, we'll start with the diffusers first, but first I'll put the light onto max power and we can just shine it at Godzilla here. Um, as you can see, the light is very strong. Um, it's unfiltered straight from the light. But if I take the light diffuser, which is a very thin sheet of plastic, and that just clips on with the magnets. And now the light has gone on a lot softer. As a, the softer diffused light is a lot more flattering on the objects that you want to take a photo of. No diffuser? Diffuser. You can see there's a very big difference. Okay, now we'll put the strong one on. That's exactly the same as the light one, but stronger. So it'll reduce the amount of light that comes through um, by quite a bit. So again, if you want very soft light, just to subtly fill the area to highlight the character, or maybe just coming in from behind to give some of those highlights, uh, the strong diffused light will work really well. Next up we have the honeycombs. So they call the sort of honeycomb due to, well, the honeycomb effect they have on them. We've put that on. It kind of works and looks similar to the diffused light because it is changing the light, reflecting and reducing how much comes through. Um, but it's a little bit hard to see. 
But if you kind of move around, you can kind of see there's some subtle shadows. So it breaks up the light and kind of gives you that look where you're, as I sort of saying before, standing under a tree in the midday sun. So I'll switch over to the other honeycomb, which has the smaller sized ones. So on here, you can kind of see the lines a little bit easier. Hopefully that's coming through the camera well. Okay, next up is the gels. Now, technically this isn't a gel per se, it's just a colored piece of plastic. Um, gels is a term in photography where back in the day before you had LEDs you could change the color. You would place the color gels in front of the lights uh, to give it a red, blue, green, um, any color you wanted um, to change the color of the lights. So this works exactly the same way. So a red one, put the red one on, you now have a red light. So this is really cool to give you those. Um, so these gels are really cool. It allows you to give really cool mood to your photos and to play with the colors of the figures themselves. Green one, got the blue. And then yellow. Okay, the last four ones are the warming gels. Now, what they mean by warming is with light you have a cool and a warm look. Um, so for example, a warm color, warm light, is again midday sun or maybe towards more towards sunset sunrise when the light in the sky is that real nice orange yellow color then the cool light is the type of light you get say on a cloudy day you kind of don't have that warmth for life to it it's a bit more dreary uh, so the way we control that with the lights is with a warming gel there's two levels there's a level one and a level four and what this is, it's very similar to the red gel. It's very similar to the red gel, but a lot more subtle. So this is the non-filtered light. As you can see, the light coming from Godzilla is very white. If I switch the warming gel on, it might be hard to see it on the camera, but he is slightly yellow. Or has a bit more of a orangey tint to his um, armor. I'll switch that for a level four, which you can see is a lot more concentrated. It's very similar to the red gel. And when I use this on him, yeah, it looks like he's got that lovely sunset bathed color to him. And then since these are magnetic, you can actually stack them. So now We've gone a lot stronger. And then again, you can put the honeycomb on top to diffuse that light even more. And even then, if you feel like that's too strong, you can put a diffuser on. Now, it's a very subtle light. You get the light in pretty close to get any real strong lighting on them. Okay, so that pretty much covers it for all of the different gels and diffusers you get. Um, but there's two more accessories that does come with this. These. These are what's called snoots and like the barn doors you use them to control the direction of light. Now as you can probably tell from the shape of these you're essentially making a spotlight. Now if I use it on Godzilla here you can see the light goes from his snout all the way down his spine to his legs and covers the whole area. But if I put the snoot on now the light is only covering his head and neck. So this is really cool if you want to really get in and pinpoint a certain area. Okay, so I've got for you the SH Figure Arts Bardock figure here. And I wanted to show you how you can use the snoot to create a cool lighting effect. Uh, so for Bardock here, he's holding his key blast and it's blue. So what you can do, you can take the light, put on a blue gel. And then when you shine it on Bardock, he's now getting that nice blue color and light reflecting onto his face as if it was coming from the key. 
But to take it up another notch, you can take this snoot, add it on, and now when you shine it on, you can just focus in just on that key blast to give it the blue highlights. And then from there, it's reflecting onto his shoulder, chest, and face. So you can have the second light and take a red gel, have it off to the side, kind of angle up at him, and they'll give him the nice red highlights down one side. Take the second light with a blue um, gel and the snoot, focus it on his key blast, and now you get the red light from the background and the blue highlight on the key blast, and it really ties in the figure and the look and feel of what he's doing. You can easily hide them behind different. Um, dioramas and effects. So this is a broken building, I think 144 scale, sort of designed for the train sets, uh, but works really well for the Godzilla figures. So if we have like Godzilla, have a building, and you can set the red light behind, and now that will shine through the building, and then you can get the second light, and use it to highlight and brighten up. Godzilla himself. Okay, so that should cover just about everything for these lights. Um, I guess I should go over charge time as well. In the manual it says it should take about 45 to 60 minutes to charge a light. Uh, the first time I did it, it took a lot longer. I've actually only charged this up one time so far, and it was probably close to an hour, hour and a half. Um, it was definitely took quite a while to charge it. And the first time, I used my phone's uh, USB-C uh, charger and it didn't work. It wouldn't connect at all. Uh, instead, I had to use the USB cable that it comes with and it worked connecting to my computer and also charged using that cable connected to a uh, standard plug USB adapter. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's just because the cable I have uh, doesn't fit in this device properly or if you really need to use a specific type of USB-C. Um, but since you do get cables, it's not too much of an issue. Uh, overall, for the accessories that it comes with, I feel the diffuser hubs and the gels are very useful, especially the snoot. I've only had a couple of tests with the lights so far, and so far, I really like them. Um, are they worth the value that you pay? <sighs> that one, I'm still on the fence. I believe if you've got the extra money lying around and you can get them for their discounted price of $2.99 at the moment and you're going to use them a lot, then I think it's probably worthwhile you're going to get your money's worth. If you're only going to use it every now and then, maybe not quite worth getting. Um, alternatively, these LED panels are pretty common and popular. And this one, let's turn it on. Uh, for this one here, you've got a couple of different modes. Uh, you've got a RGB mode where I can basically any color of a rainbow you can create with this light. And then you've also got a base light mode where you can control the um, warmth and corners via white balance of the light, which is very useful, especially if you're using it in conjunction with other light studio lights, you can match the white balance. Um, there's also some other kind of funky modes where it will rotate through the different colors. This is kind of a bit more orientated to doing videos opposed to stills. But very good and cheap. I think these are about 100, 120, maybe $150 depending where you are. And there's quite a few different versions of these. There's ones where it's just for RGB color, one with our RGB color selection, um, and some different sizes as well. But useful, charges by USB-C, lasts a long time, and pretty cheap. You can probably get three of these for the price of this kit. The downside is you don't have the light controlling accessories. And that is the main bonus of this light. And if you're doing a lot of figure photography or product photography, that's where this is going to come in really handy. Um, it's very small. You can, you can easily hide it behind buildings and effects, rocks, rubble, anything you have in your diorama setup. If you really need the light only on one specific area, you can use the snoot to concentrate it. And if the light's too bright, even after controlling the uh, brightness in the light itself, then you've got a variety of different filters. You've got the honeycomb, got diffusers, and you've also got the big dome diffuser as well if you just want to 
light the whole scene. Plus the various gels to control the color as well. Not as well as the RGB panel, but your base colors, blue, red, green, and uh, you can all do via these lights well. And the two lights. So for $2.99, if you're gonna use it, I think it's worth buying. In terms of quality, again, haven't used it too much, but the um, lights themselves feel really good. Um, I'm not sure if it's a quality control issue, but one of my lights kind of had a, okay, it's vanished now. I think it's this one. There's a black dot in the middle of the light. I think it's a bit of dust or dirt in there. Seems to have moved off. It doesn't affect the performance, um, but that was one issue. And a lot of the gels were kind of already marked and dirty even though it's brand new so quality control maybe not the best of a price i to be honest i'd expect a lot more um but in saying that it doesn't affect the performance the case is really nice it's got a good carry case that does hold everything so the case here holds both lights and all of the filters down the side and the accessories and then on the top here got the zip lock bag we can keep the charge cables um, in terms of features I haven't used or discussed it does have Bluetooth capabilities and there is an app you can download for your phone haven't tried it yet so I can't speak to how well it works um, the for a small note the case really stinks it's got a very strong chemical factory cheap smell to it which is a shame because the case is nice hopefully if it's left out in the open um, that smell will go away eventually Okay, so overall, despite the $2.99 US price tag um, and the kind of bit iffy QC, um, I think these are awesome lights and definitely worth getting. I would recommend them, um, especially doing figure photography and also product photography. I can see them being useful there for some um, backlighting. Um, if you do grab some for yourself, please do tag me in the photos you take at the great figure man on instagram um or you can link and comment below in the comments again thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like this but more behind the scenes photography gear talk um how i take photos any techniques anything like that please let me know in the comments below and i'll try and add those videos to the channel in the future cool thanks for watching